those who have joined late please help them out with the page numbers and topic name diet in obesity and underweight chapter 15 in dietetics So the prevalence of uh, obesity, okay, it is rising. The trend of obesity in the worldwide population is rising. Okay, people are getting more and more obese, usually in the developed countries as compared to underdeveloped countries. Okay, the countries which have higher GDP, they have high risk of most of the obese uh, population. So common symptoms in adults who are obese, there will be sweating that is more than usual snoring or trouble during uh, sleeping, even sleep apnea, okay, disturbance in sleep or breathing difficulty during uh, when they lie down, okay, but when they elevate their chest, when they elevate, use little bit of pillows and they elevate their neck and little bit elevation under the chest, that could relieve them, okay, so that is sleep apnea, shortness of breath, even if they do small physical activity, they feel shortness of breath and there are skin problems like, um, dilated veins bluish uh, green veins uh, capillaries that are quite visible on the thighs okay upper thighs or, or the, any area of the thighs sometimes in the calves calf region also you can see, uh, uh, see this spider waves okay it starts like spider veins and then later it can con uh, contribute to varicose vein etc okay so these are the common symptoms in adults in adolescents uh, Acanthosis nigeris, it's a very dark, uh, velvety skin. Okay, so you, you see some usually in pregnancy, also, these things do take place. Uh, but uh, after post pregnancy, the skin gets lighter. Okay, in some women, the skin near the neck, the base of the neck, it gets dark and velvety. Okay, even if it, if the person is not sweating, it this particular skin has a kind of sheen to it. Okay. So this is called as acanthosis nigricans. So uh, in adolescents, this is a very common feature when the adolescents start put on weight. Also, hormones also trigger this. Okay, why specifically in adolescents? Uh, when you want to treat acanthosis nigricans, you have to check uh, get your blood work done because mo uh, majorly your hormones will impact the presence of this particular dark base or uh, base color neck okay sleep apnea same like uh, adult adolescent adults shortness of breath with even a small physical activity stretch marks uh, the spider veins are more common in adults okay uh, and stretch marks are more common in adolescents even for uh, uh, adolescents teenagers who are not obese okay who are quite healthy most commonly in women Okay, when a child or when a girl attains puberty, okay, even before she attains puberty, when her body is developing, you will start noticing uh, stretch marks here and there in the body. It, it, it may not be related to weight gain. It may not be related to uh, obesity or overweightness. Usually it is the sudden growth spurt. Okay, growth spurts will lead to some or the other kinds of stretch marks. So try, try to differ differentiate it. Uh, every teenager who has stretch mark doesn't mean that uh, he or she is overweight, okay? Growth spurts will also lead to stretch marks, okay? Then we have morbid obesity. Uh, that is like here we, we require treatment. The patient requires weight management. Otherwise, vital organs may get affected in the long run. So chronic breathing difficulty, a, a person who is more than 100 pounds in weight, okay? If you convert 100 pounds into kilograms, you will get the answer to it. Difficulty even to uh, to walk properly. Okay, forget about the physical activity, even brisk walking or walking within their household becomes difficult for them, okay? So uh, BMI with compared to age, uh, as your BMI slightly increases your bmi should not peak along with your age okay you can see the trend of this graph the green part of the graph which you can see okay the uh, your weight should be little bit you should be little bit plump when you are born okay during the childhood your weight will reduce because you are growing you are physically active and when when you uh, reach towards adulthood when you when your age increases slowly and steadily you can see how 
the green this four green area of the bmi versus age is going it's a very steady increase okay and yellow is overweight okay there is an increase but it's little bit more abrupt okay and a person who is obese or underweight the red demarcation which you can see over and below below there is a tiny stroke of um, a red line that is underweight and on top of it you can see uh, uh, getting rid of uh, stretch marks there are various laser interventions okay topical creams they claim that they affect on uh, stretch marks or some topical oils and creams they do not have any uh, reasonable visible effect okay the skin around that area because of your regular massage may get better and it gives you a um, it is it does not treat the stretch mark but it gives you a shiny appearance which will create an illusion that the skin does not have that depth of a stretch mark okay the so stretch mark is an internal scarring okay so internal scarring like if uh, if you get a small scratch somewhere on top of your hand on the epidermis okay, within two or day uh, two, uh, two three days it will heal and that area will be completely as as new but when you have the same uh, uh, kind of scarring in a very internal layers of your skin okay starting from the dermis okay not just the epidermis but also the dermis healing them from within and just by using topical uh, oils or creams are not optional okay so that is the reason why uh, healing stretch marks or treating stretch marks usually it may require some surgical as well as laser in interventions and even with laser interventions you have to be very regular with that okay once a month or once uh, once three months something like that is the laser intervention done for stretch mark okay so you have to be very regular with that because you are treating a scar which is under the skin okay so no, don't depend on some top, topical medications okay topical medications will not help so that's about stretch marks yeah very very yeah uh, so when you see this red area okay along with the age there is a sudden increase in the body mass index okay that is the height and weight of the child is suddenly increasing the, obviously there should there would be a um, growth spurt, a spurt as well so that would lead to obesity so that's about the graph. Next, coming to the factors that lead to your risk of having, uh, getting obesity. So genetic factors influences most of the 50 to 70% of cases. If uh, you, you have a, uh, like your family members, obesity runs in your family, there are high chances that you may also fall victim to it. Then we have age and sex. It can occur at any age. Obesity does not have a very set age. Nowadays, even in small children who had just stopped having breast milk and they have they are they are being weaned into regular food, even in such small children, one year old age child and all, you will see obese children. Okay, overfeeding by parents that could lead to infant uh, infantile obesity. So yeah, it does not have a specific age when it starts. But females are uh, have higher tendency to be obese. The rate of obesity is higher in females as compared to males, and that is uh, that is highly because of their hormones. Then we have eating habit. Okay, too much of snacking in between your major meals. Okay, some some people eat fast and they don't chew their food adequately. If the mastication process is not adequate, your your body, your brain will think that okay, in, enough bites have not been taken. We require more bites, so the brain will not allow the body to feel satiated. So you may overeat. Okay, eating faster and not chewing pro uh, properly. Okay, at least uh, see thirty two times you have to chew. They say, but uh, when when you are in a very routine kind of lifestyle it's not e healthy to practice that much amount of time in just one meal okay at least 20 times chewing of uh, chewing a morsel of food 20 times would be more than enough okay so uh, eating faster and not chewing properly could lead to overeating which further leads to obesity then uh, the housewives who are fond of cooking a variety of food 
or people who are working in the kitchen and when they are cooking delicious meals and all in between cooking they will uh, taste and taste and they will have a small morsel of food some small portion of food and along with their family they will sit and eat and if the family does not finish their food the housewife will try to finish it so that she was she does not want to waste the food or something like that so that could lead to obesity so various eating habits they have mentioned on page number uh, 291 very interesting uh, uh, statements just go through that okay you will get an insight about it no need to buy hat anything just like a novel read that these points we have listed down on page number 291 okay having too much of processed concentrated food high in fat sucrose etc and low water consumption people who drink very little amount of water they have higher chances of being obese then physical activity people who live a sedentary lifestyle they and uh, who people people who do not pay much attention to their physical activity form fit etc uh, or daily physical activity at least 10 10000 uh, steps a day etc they if they don't focus on this they uh, there are high chances they get obese stress stress eating okay very common among teenagers and young adults stress eating okay overeating during stress Uh, could lead to like like when you are stressed you want something to make you happy and most of the people they find this guilty pleasures via food okay the food that is very accessible so overeating because of stress induced overeating and all could lead to obesity then we have endocrine factor uh, like uh, any any hormonal issues okay like for example hypothyroidism hypogonadism uh, like when your gonads that is uh, ovaries in women testes in men okay with hypo means less functioning so when your ovaries or testes are not functioning enough they are not producing enough hormones there are high chances you get obese and in women it's estrogen okay estrogen is the main culprit here if you if women who have too much of estrogen being secreted by their ovaries there are high chances that you may be overweight or obese progesterone usually tends to slow you down okay but progesterone does not uh, add on to uh, like increase in weight much as compared to estrogen menopause or uh, pregnancy puberty puberty again when uh, when you if if you are a parent of an adolescent child you must have seen this when your child is about to hit puberty okay uh, a girl or a boy okay about to hit puberty their uh, their focus on their fondness for food increases okay because naturally hormones are increasing their hunger value increasing their appetite as well as their physically active school tuitions etc okay so you must have witnessed this so these are the some of the examples of endocrine factor then trauma uh, any uh, any head injury in which your hypothalamus has been injured or got affected there is a damage to your hypothalamus uh, so hypothalamus is that part of the brain which will control your appetite and satiety okay uh, so that's the area of the brain which tells you okay enough your stomach is full full st stop eating okay that's a signal what hypothalamus should be uh, sending to your stomach and or to your actions so you stop eating you say that okay i'm completely full I'm, i don't no longer require food i'm done for today's meal okay so when hypothalamus get damaged this neurotransmission is affected okay so people do overeat they do not know when to stop so that could lead to obesity then prosperity and civilization as i have mentioned earlier most of the prosperous countries or developed countries like uk russia uh, usa okay people who generally come from a higher socio economic status not just in these um, wealthy countries but in also in the uh, underdeveloped countries the section of the people who come from a higher socio economic class the rate of obesity is much higher in in this particular class of people then we have some drugs which promote uh, weight gain like some psychiatric drugs like antidepressants steroid hormones contraceptives in women diabetic drugs antihistamines for allergy okay these things may increase your weight 
also when uh, women uh, women when they are trying this ivf treatments and all in vitro fertilization etc so even in that uh, cases you can see, you may see women get uh, obese quick, quicker because they are induced with artificial uh, hormones okay so hormones hormonal drugs play a very important factor uh, role in gaining weight then there are some theories of how uh, what 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 is the foundation of a person getting obese so there is a fat cell theory so the number of fat cells you have in your early life for example when you are born all, all children are born with specific amount of fat cells okay this amount of fat cells may be determined by your genetics okay if a child is born to obese parents or a child is born into a family where obesity runs in their uh, lineage so what happens the child is born with um, moderately more number of fat cells as compared to other children another reason to uh, to this is uh, when in childhood okay in, in infancy or when the child is growing up when the child is even below 5 years of age when the child was very chubby bubbly and the, when the child was overweight as compared to its peers okay the, it's known that the child naturally has higher number of fat cells as compared to its peers okay so what happens is that the child when grows up this uh, uh this adipose cells or fat cells will not disappear it's still in the body even though the child becomes a very lean thin person when they grow up in their adoles adolescence and teenage year and even into early adulthood okay the child has shedded that excess weight during the child childhood itself and they have grown into a healthy lean individual but still their chances of being obese in the future is much higher as compared to its peers because the child was, was either born with extra fat cells or the obesity with the which the child faced during its initial phase of childhood gave the child naturally more fat cells so that is the fat cell theory so obese children they have more fat cells and more more fat cells means you can easily regain the lost weight okay then we have the set point theory the, this theory the school of thought says that every body every person's body is physiologically regulated okay and your met metabolism will adjust along with your weight gain and weight loss that, that is quite true okay like for example your body the adapt uh, adaptability of body to sudden environmental changes is it's, it's very something very special okay for example uh, this entire week you uh, you were fasting for example it was uh, for muslims how it is like roza okay the month of Ram uh, ramadan the holy month of ramadan okay you may see the metabolic changes okay the, the com your complete food cycle has changed early morning morning and only after seven or something okay and the entire day you're fasting even without water obviously your metabolism has changed your body has learned quickly to adapt to this particular routine okay so your body physiologically maintains or adapts itself to the sudden change in food pattern sudden loss or sudden gain in weight okay but then there is a set point okay your 5 kilos uh, less or more okay or let's say 3 kilos 3 kilograms uh, more or less your body can adapt to or to its to to this new found weight and it can adapt its metabolism accordingly but beyond that if you gain 6 kg or 7 kg within a month obviously your body's metabolism is slowing down okay or suddenly you have lost 6 to 7 kg within a month means something so your metabolism is not in balance your body is wasting a lot of energy than what it is consuming okay so uh, this set point theory can help you reduce fat at set point with exercise for example uh, the, uh, we see this uh, with re uh, regular customers that uh, they are e for the first few months like first three months or first four months of weight loss they are easily losing weight but after that after this first four or three months of their weight loss journey they find it so difficult even with regular exercise and whatever has helped them so far it's not working with that intensity so or no more okay Can, have you experienced this in even in your personal life if somebody was in a weight loss journey you must have seen you must have hit a plateau
initially it was very easy for you to shed few kilos but later something happened that you are doing the same thing you're not increasing your calories you're doing that same amount of phys physical exercise but you're not losing that additional weight okay you have you seem to hit a plateau okay you're not going below below that it does happen the the meaning being uh, you have if you want to weigh, uh, lose more you have to in uh, like increase the resistance in your training okay calories could remain the same but you have to increase the resistance in your physical exercise for example just by walking two hours a day one hour in the morning one hour in the evening and following a, a 1800 or 1500 kilo uh, uh, kilo calories per day you have achieved a very good weight loss but you have to shed that extra two three kilos that is very difficult for you do one thing when you go out for walk even for that one hour brisk walk add some weights on your ankles or wrist or even nowadays you get this jacket weights okay so what what this, what happens here is that your you, your body after you uh, you uh, shedding that initial kilograms will get used to the weight it uh, uh, it it has achieved and the body does not think there is a, a, require, a requirement to change anything or come down to even a, a, a lesser kilograms so now you have to trick your body no you uh, you are uh, you have more weight okay uh, by adding few weights in your training and all you have to trick your body that you know uh, it's not true you have not lost weight you have to lose further more that's why you are adding weights in your physical training so a resistant training will help you to lower down the plateau okay so the, the main thing is even with the uh, with the problem jolene paradia has mentioned you have to add resistance training in your regime okay even when you are fasting alternate days that is also a kind of intermittent intermittent fasting but uh, try to do this thing on the on the days when you are having food okay on that particular day you can add resistant training okay Then we have another theory that is hunger versus appetite. This theory is not mentioned in the textbook, but still we'll just explain it. What do you eat and how do you eat? That is what it means. Hunger is physiological. Your hypothalamus, it con uh, controls your hunger. Okay, hypothalamus will signal you, okay, you are hungry, go and have food. When you're having food, hypothalamus will signal you, okay, now you're no more hungry, you're, you're satiated, stop eating food. Okay, so that is hunger, it's physiological. Okay, you can uh, you can track down the physiology of this mechanism, hunger mechanism in your body, just like how you have a thirst mechanism um, between your throat and the brain. You have hunger mechanism between your stomach and your brain. It's, it's physiological, okay? But appetite, appetite is psychological, okay? Even though the body is hungry, the body wants food, but if you are undergoing, uh, you are undergoing some psychological trauma, you're undergoing some stress, anxiety, something like that, you will not feel like having food. Physiology is telling you to have food, okay? You are hungry. You can hear your uh, stomach making those sounds when it is hungry, okay? That murmurs what your stomach makes. You can hear that, but still you are psychologically not ready to go and devour a food or a meal. Okay, so that is appetite. Appetite is completely psychological. Okay, loss of hunger, loss of appetite is different thing. Okay, when you are stressed, when you are anxious, your body obviously requires food, but you do not feel like eating. Okay, that is loss of appetite. Loss of hunger means you may have uh, uh, undergone some traumatic surgery in your stomach or you have undergone some injury on your head, which led to break down of this hunger mechanism in your body, okay, that is physiological, okay. Yeah, even if you can carry a bag while uh, walking or for example, if you do not want to uh, strain your body that much, it's the better option is uh, like for example, the initial four months when you were on the weight loss journey, you were walking on plain surfaces, okay, like roads or parks or something like that. Now you have to change your venue of walking. You have to go to areas which is slightly, which has a slight slope 
element to it slope okay a small hill like a slope something that goes up okay so instead of walking you can add uh, climbing few stairs okay the first 45 minutes you will just walk on the plane if you can't find a slopey area or a hilly area nearby okay you can definitely find some staircases so 45 minutes spent on walking 15 minutes spent climbing stairs uh, coming down again climbing up up the stairs okay so the, this is like adding resistance to your daily regimen okay it's not just necessary that you go out spend money and get this ankle weights wrist weights or chest weights if, if you can't afford it you have staircases free of cost okay or slopes or a hilly area to do your walking so even that that can enhance your resistance Next, coming to the role of hormones. So in obesity, uh, the fat cells and how the hormones work on these fat cells on your hunger, etc., is very important. So first we have uh, insulin. 80% of the obese people who already suffer from obesity, they have too much of insulin. And uh, the and the highest, the, when the insulin gets secreted so much from your pancreas that after a point of time, your fat cells will not respond it okay your your cells or your body will not just respond okay this is this fellow is always being secreted and coming and disturb, disturbing us we don't we will not mind him that's what your body will tell uh, tell to too much of insulin after a point of time so what is that that is becoming insulin resistant okay when your pancreas has literally uh, secreted out way more of insulin to help your body compact this extra fat extra glucose that there comes a point that the cells will stop responding to insulin. So that is insulin resistance. Okay. So that is quite high in obese people. So, um, and even in weight loss, okay, effect, effect on weight loss of insulin. So if you can improve your insulin sensitivity, if you trick your body with certain diets, okay, with certain diets, you, uh, you starve your body from high carbohydrate diet and all for a brief period of time and then you slowly introduce carbohydrates back that's when your cells will start responding to insulin in a normal way okay so when uh, ins insulin sensitivity is established in your body you will start you will see uh, that you will have started to lose weight easily okay then we have thyroid hormone uh, free thyroxine levels uh, is usually normal in obese people, but uh, their uh, the other T4 elements, etc., that is quite high in uh, people suffering from thyroid issues. Especially hypothyroidism has minimal effect on long term body weight. Okay, you must have come across this this cases very often if you are a gym trainer or, or a dietitian. Uh, women who suffer from thyroid issues okay losing weight is a hercules ta task for them that thyroid will just not support the lose or uh, losing of weight so uh, what you have to do here the treatment what you suggest like not just the dietitian it's it is usually done by the endocrinologist so that uh, the treatment here is they will try to decrease the amount of t3 hormones okay and along with that fat-free diet is suggested to them. So these are the only techniques that will initially help them out. But then yeah, lifestyle changes will also have to work. They can't tolerate stress. Okay. People with thyroid issues, they are not, uh, they are advised to follow up with medication, meditations, etc. And to live in a stress-free environment, that is the best option for them. Then we have growth hormone. The more, the more the amount of growth hormone you have, it is easier for you to maintain your muscle mass, lean muscle mass and lose weight. Okay, growth hormone enhances the production of lean muscle mass. So if you have lean muscle more in your body, automatically the fat cells will drop down. So that's how you can stay in a lean fit figure, okay, with healthy lean muscle mass and lose weight. Decrease, uh, decreased secretion of growth hormone could lead to obesity. So then we have uh, leptin. Leptin is a kind of hormone secreted by your stomach. Okay, so so if the if the uh, if if the leptin is too much, okay, that is what it leads to obesity. If you are able to reduce your plasma leptin levels through medications, okay, uh, you can achieve weight loss.
for thyroid we will usually suggest to follow up with uh, you, you have three streams in in india you have three main streams of medic uh, med uh, medications that is allopathy you have ayurveda and homeopathy okay whatever has worked for you in the past okay just follow that stream of med medicine and whatever guidance uh, the homeopath or the ayurveda doctor or the allopathy doctor has given you you have to follow that okay uh, for, about the food uh, so for, for example if a person is suffering from hyperthyroidism uh, they can have cauliflower and the cruciferous food those who are suffering from hypothyroidism they are not supposed to have specific kind of food okay that kind of knowledge uh, the the treating physician okay because the kind of advice the, the kind of food advice you get from an allopath would be slightly different from homeo and ayurveda so whatever field of medicine you have chosen to treat, treat yourself with just follow the those um remarks and guidelines okay give it a six or one year it will not uh, the, the effects will not be shown shown immediately thyroid takes a lot of time to uh, to show up positive results okay thyroid treatment with any any branch of medicine okay so you have to be patient you have to give your doctor uh, physician at least six months of time to see if the treatment is working or not and then decide okay so i would i will not suggest some specific morning drink or something like that until and unless it is uh it has been told to you ex exclusively to follow, follow for example if you are following some ayurveda uh, kind of management for thyroid obviously they will give you some kashayams some medicines some churans etc they will give you specifically to have in the morning mix it with hot water lukewarm milk or honey and have okay they will have give you the complete guidelines of what kind of food you should you should have okay specifically to balance your vata pitta kapha etc so yeah uh, you, uh, that kind of food related dietary guidelines and especially at what time you should have the food even that in ayurveda you can get answers to that in homeopathy and all, and all, you will see restrictions to coffee or uh, garlic okay restrictions are seen because uh, they do not uh, promote having pungent foods pungent foods or too much of aromatic food in your diet when you are preparing a food for a person who is undergoing homeopathic treatment okay uh, for uh, people who are having acidity problem first try to drink more of fluids okay Uh, so more fluids in terms of juice or water butter milk whatever okay the 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 goal here for you is that acidity means too much of concentration of hydrochloric acid in your stomach how will you reduce the concentration you dilute it okay you dilute your stomach acids how will you do that the best uh, action for it is have more water based food like soups okay like soups porridge oats something like that okay uh, liquid khichdi okay dal khichdi that is a semi liquid in in consistency okay kanni and all uh, any any uh, ragi kanni or something like that that will be quite beneficial for you especially at night at night please don't consume solid food keep uh, keep come consuming some soup or some liquid diet at night okay the best thing to have at night for everyone uh, is that irrespective of what kind of um, disease conditions you may be having apart from kidney diseases okay for everyone at night the best thing to have is uh, a 200 or 250 ml bowl full of dal okay uh, untempered dal okay just boil the dal with your favorite vegetable or just tomato okay just boil it smash it properly okay uh, have some lemon on it sprinkle some salt according to your taste okay uh, and just uh, have that dal soup okay that's the best thing that will that will satiate you your protein requirements will also be met slightly not completely okay dal is not such a big source of protein but still okay and it is easy on stomach okay dal is something that in every form of indian cuisine we have incorporated different types of dal okay bengal gram tuwar dal moong dal whatever okay so your body knows to take take, take care of it so don't shock your system at night okay at night your body requires to sleep it requires to rest so give it something that it understands how to 
or metabolized okay and having just dal even without rice just plain cup of dal aids in your weight loss it satiates you okay you will feel full it will also work on your acidity because it is in liquid state okay you're diluting your stomach acids with it so yeah that's about the role of hormones in uh, obesity so assessment of weight for male and female the, the um the weight is given here in pounds the height is given here in uh, not centimeter it's in uh, feet and inches okay so you can convert the uh, these um, this weight into kilograms just use a google okay uh, for let's say for example a person a woman who is 54 in height okay uh, her target uh, weight should be around 133 pounds okay so just uh, right now you can do it use your mobile phone and search uh, convert uh, pounds to kilograms okay you will get the answer to it just uh, just uh, put it in the chat box what you have found for the for the woman who is 5 feet 4 inch okay her target weight should be 133 pounds okay so in kilograms just do uh, do the conversion just google it okay and whatever answer you get just put it in the chat box yes the weight is 60 kilograms so i guess if you take a screenshot of it you will you will have an idea of how to convert this uh, i i i didn't find um, any details about uh, centimeters and kilograms it's it's the bmi index we have on centimeters and kilograms but this is a very good source you can just take a screenshot of it it can help you and your clients to discuss or decide what what is the target what is the upper limit of your weight you should not go beyond it and lower limit you should not fall beyond this okay so this is a range so yeah this is the bmi chart i was talking about so here again see if you see uh, on this left side on this left side uh, height is given in feet inches also along with that in centimeters also they have mentioned okay in inches as well as in uh, feet as as well as in centimeters and if you uh, see the topmost area of it weight is mentioned in pounds as well as in kilograms okay so um, you have this uh colors okay like blue means underweight green means healthy they are in the healthy range yellow overweight orange obese and red extremely obese so how to use this graph uh, let's say uh, somebody who is 58 okay around 172.7 cm okay a uh, few centimeters up and down will also do no worries so Uh, and this person's five uh, eight. Okay, remember the height is five eight. 
and this person's kilogram is around 68.2 kgs 68.2 kgs okay so what do you think is um, is their status as of as of now are they underweight healthy or overweight if you combine if you just draw a line from 68 downward and 58 sidewards so 58 downwards if you bring the body mass index is 22 okay and we know that the body mass index between 19 and 24.9 or 24.5 is healthy okay ideally it is considered healthy so this is a healthy person statistic okay so if you do not remember our bmi formula or every time you have to open a calculator to collect the bmi formula so this chart is very predictable okay even even without calculator you can directly check what is the bmi scores but remember this thing bmi is uh, very subjective in nature for a generalized population you can use bmi but for when you are using bmi for individual consultations even if you get a person whose bmi is around 25 or 26 doesn't mean that they are unhealthy okay the terms which they have used here okay healthy overweight okay these uh, the the terms terminologies may not be uh, an appropriate way to measure their health okay for example uh, even in sports nutrition we have discussed this athletes okay performing athletes uh, when you check their body mass index you will never find an athlete who comes in the range of 19 18 to 24 or 19 to 24 4.9 okay most of the performing athletes have a body mass index which is between 25 and 30 okay so by uh, when you follow the theory of body mass index so all these athletes should come under the overweight category okay uh, not not in the uh, other category so what happens here is uh but but they may be very fit okay they may be very fit and they are getting proper care in terms of their nutrition in uh, terms of their physical stamina etc as compared to any other healthy person determined by bmi okay so bmi is not an indicator of health okay you can use bmi only to justify a statement for a general population a huge number of people okay at individual level you have to look at other vital stat statistics as well okay so that is one drawback of bmi this is a ba based a uh, circumference okay uh, there is a rule in japan i don't know if you have heard about it or not uh, senior citizens okay usually when you cross the age of 40 or 50 uh, all the adults they have to by law by law they have to go and get their weight circumference checked in a public health department uh, have you heard about this law in japan this is a rule there okay uh, people in mid life or in later life after they cross a certain age i guess it is 40s or 45 something like that after they cross that age in japan you have to go and regularly annually twice or something like that you have to get your waist circumference waist lines checked if it is above the national health ideal range you have to involve yourself into some physical training classes or courses to lose weight so this is the law in japan okay by by uh, law it means that government wants the citizens to regulate their weight okay so this is a law so yeah weight circumference also plays a very important role in justifying that how healthy you are in terms of your cardiac health mostly about your cardiac health okay so females whose weight circumference is less than see uh, um, about waist circumference we will talk in inches because uh, people wear jeans or they get trousers and all usually you go by the inches okay so in centimeters you may not understand for example 32 waist 30 waist something like that it is in inches okay so we'll go by the inch value of it 
So people, uh, women who have a, a jeans waist line that is less than 27, they go for 26 waist size, etc. something like that means they are very low. Their, uh, their risk category is very, uh, very low in terms of cardiac issues, etc. Okay. And for uh, males, uh, men who have less than 31 inch waist line, very low. And 27 to 30, 35, if you're, uh, if you're using a jeans or trousers within this, between this range for women, okay, uh, you are still healthy if you have a low risk of obesity or cardiac disorders. For men, the inches are given here. If you cross th 35 inches, okay, when you go shopping, you cross, cross 35 inches uh, for your lower body okay by, by by getting jeans or trousers it means you already are in the high risk zone of obesity as well as cardiac disorders for men it is about 39 inches so this image is an image of a dexa scan okay dual energy x-ray absorbometry so that's the full form of dexa so uh, as i mentioned earlier bmi we cannot um, tell you the amount of uh, like the difference of fat content in your body and the lean muscle mass you have in your body bmi cannot tell you that okay but dexa when you do a dexa scan okay most of the athletes they get the dexa scan done because they want to exactly know what percent of their body is fat how much percent of muscle mass they have okay to get that exact figures they go for this dexa scan so you can see whatever is blue in color okay this turquoise light blue in color that is the solid parts of your body that's the bone okay and when you go to the other end of the spectrum yellow color that is fat okay so uh, a person or usually, usually a radiologist, okay, radiologist uh, will understand just by looking at the uh, amount of area spread in different colors or you will get an, uh, a column, a table of this analysis also, okay, the DEXA will analyze the amount of percent spread out of different colors, okay, and you will get that analysis in your report. So DEXA scan is used to understand exactly how much of muscle versus fat versus uh, solid bone you have in your body. Then we have ponderal index. So uh, it is the ratio of your height to cube root of uh, your weight. And uh, ponderal insect, uh, index, again, very rarely used, not that commonly used. Okay, It's a, it's a very complex formula. So uh, a person who has an index that is less than 13 is associated with obesity. Okay, If your ponderal index is less than 13, okay? The uh, BMI analysis machine uh, is not required because you have this apps or websites when you Google it, just put the height and weight, these websites will give you the answer, okay? Along with the report, are you obese, underweight or, or not, okay? So yeah, BMI analysis machine is not, I, I don't think so that is that useful as compared to DEXA, okay? So ponderal index, you can, uh, if, if you're free now, you can just go to the Google and just uh, search ponderal index calculator. Okay, you can do it right now. Ponderal index calculator. So you can put your height in uh, centimeters and uh, or, or feet you can choose. Usually in India, we use centimeters. So that is ide ideal. So uh, did you do that? Uh, did you your yourselves? Uh, Ponderal index, did you get the answer?
So anyone who got less than 30, okay, any figure like 12, 11, 10, something like that, it means you are obese, okay? If you have got more than 20, 25 and all, you're healthy, okay? 45 and all, you may be underweight, please check again, okay? So that is ponderal index. It's a modified BMI calculator, okay? So then next you have waist to hip ratio. Women who have the um, waist to hip ratio, which is less than 0 0.80 or below, they have very low risk for heart diseases, okay? Uh, waist to hip ratio is what? Your waist divided by your hip, okay? That is waist to hip ratio. Waist is, for example, your jeans size, whatever uh, denim size you use, your denim trouser size or your regular pant size, whatever you use, take that as your waist, okay? And if you have a measuring tape, you can do this later. If you have a measuring tape at home, uh, calculate the, uh, measure your hips, okay? Hips are different from waist. Waist is where your pants can sit com comfortably, not the low waist or the high waist jeans, the regular mid waist jeans, okay? So where your pants can sit comfortably, okay? That is your waist and hips is the, uh, it's the mo most elevated part of your buttocks, okay? And just take the circumference of that part of the body and do your waist to hip ratio, okay? So depending on your gender, you can just check what, what will be uh, your risk, okay? So if, if you have a low waist to hip ratio, it's, it's much better. It means your, you, your health is on point. So naturally people, women or men, okay? Women and men, they, do, they both have pear-shaped bodies, okay? So people who have pear-shaped bodies, okay? That means you have wider hips and buttocks as compared to your upper body. That is pear-shaped body, okay? So naturally they have low risk for uh, cardiac disorders. Then you have avocado, shape body when a huge amount of fat is near your belly okay and in apple shape body your entire torso okay not just the belly but your entire torso is heavier as compared to your limbs Then ideal body weight, we have BRCA index. BRCA index is very easy to calculate, okay? Like whatever is your height, okay? Whatever is your height for men, okay? For men, you can just subtract 100 from your height. Whatever answer you get, that should be your ideal body weight. For women, okay? Whatever is your height in centimeters, just subtract 105, 105 from that height. Whatever answer you get, that is your ideal body weight. In your textbook, it is given that both men and women, they have to use the same formula that is subtracting only 100, okay? But some articles, they have slight variation for women that I have mentioned on screen here. That is most of the articles, they say subtract 105 from the, from the woman's height. That should be her weight. For men, they can keep it to 100. It is very easy. For example, let's say somebody's height, okay, uh, a, a man, a man's height, adult man's height is 180 centimeter, 180 centimeter. What should be the ideal weight for this person? Man's height, 180. Okay, now a adult woman, her weight, uh, sorry, her height is 165 centimeter, okay? According to the formula, on screen, not on, not in textbook, on screen, 165 centimeter. What should be her ideal weight? It should be 60 kgs. Yeah. So this is the most easiest way to find your ideal body weight. You can do your own. Okay. So you will understand which weight you have to maintain. If there is one or two kgs or even three kgs, um, less than or more than your ideal weight doesn't matter don't stress much about it these fluctuations do take place okay especially for women throughout your menstrual cycle your weight will fluctuate okay as and as soon as you get near your menstrual date okay like in your luteal phase 
those who are from medical background you will understand when you are in the luteal phase means ovulation has took place your ovaries has released the egg after that there are two weeks with you in that two weeks you will be gaining a lot of weight okay usually it will be water weight edematic water weight okay and as soon as you attain your menstrual cycle when your period start the next two weeks okay when estrogen is higher and your body is in a shedding phase you will lose a lot of weight okay Of obesity for PCOD female, it's not the diet options I would suggest. It's a lifestyle option. Okay, your lifestyle has to be healthy, physically active. Okay, along with that, a a healthy diet, healthy balanced diet is what I would suggest for for a woman suffering from PCOD because it's not just life uh, your diet, but more it's more about your lifestyle. Okay, your lifestyle changes can bring about a lot of a uh, positive effect positive effect in your um, living with pcod period okay it's not just diet diet alone can't heal uh, the side effects of pcod it's a lifestyle changes you have to bring about then obesity different classes of obesity you will find this up a similar table in your textbook also i don't know which page number in textbook some somewhat similar ta uh, uh, table was there in the textbook i don't remember the page number but you can read about it later yeah, there there are different classes of obesity if you are 30 point if your bmi index okay if your bmi is around 30 to 34.9 it means you are obesity class 1 okay if your bmi goes beyond 40 okay you are class 3 obesity you may require a gastric bypass surgery most the most efficient management of people who are in obesity class 3 usually okay by default they can go for uh, bypass surgery gastric bypass surgery So next coming to adipose tissue, uh, adipose tissue in apple shape, brown shape, okay, and different types of adipose tissue. That is pink, white, and uh, brown, okay. So the white adipose tissue is related to your central control metabolic rate. Brown adipose tissue is uh, it, it defines uh, the impact of hormones okay too much of hormones can reduce or increase the brown adipose tissue in you pink adipose tissue is related with women okay the pink adipose tissue is the fat gain during your pregnancy and the fat loss during your lactation is usually usually guided by the pink adipose tissue so android and gynecoid kind of body figures so uh, the gynecoid one one on the right side that is pear shaped body okay you have a uh, small visceral fats around your pelvis okay like uh, it will not uh, affect your cardiac health uh, or any heart related issues it is very benign in um, in its function and commonly found in females and usually when a woman has a pear shaped body not every every woman has a pear shaped body but usually when a woman has this wider hips thighs and buttocks kind of body shape it means that uh, during her pregnancy this extra fat which is there on her upper thighs buttocks and hips that will be utilized for energy requirements during pregnancy and even during lactation okay so there are high chances that if you control your diet enough and uh, you give yourself enough protein and carbs from the diet okay and for fats you rely on your body you can lose your uh, your extra weight which you have gained on the hips uh, thighs and uh, waist during the pregnancy okay you can easily lose that weight post pregnancy and for android kind of body uh, figures upper body is obese there is too much of adipose tissue around your belly and these people have the highest risk of hypertension insulin resistance diabetes 
dyslipidemia, that is uh, cholesterol imbalance, and coronary heart diseases. Okay. Then we have juvenile onset obesity. It develops in infancy, as I mentioned earlier, when uh, a child is leaving breastfeeding and going into the weaning diet and parents overfeed the child since they're six months of age or one year of age. That, uh, that's, a, that's a developing period of uh, juvenile onset obesity, okay? Or in childhood. Increases it, uh, in this case, your uh, adipose cells, that fat cells are higher in number. So this satisfies the first school of thought, the fat cell theory, which we have gone through recently. So adipose tissue uh, cells have a very long lifespan uh, and they need to store fat, okay? Even if you are losing weight, even if the adipose tissues are emptied out of fat during your fat loss journey, uh, it doesn't mean, that, doesn't mean that your adipose cells will disappear. It's still there. Okay, you can't kill your adipose cells. It is. It has a very long life. So this is what it makes difficult to lose weight. So some people who can lose weight, but more than that, more quickly than losing weight, they can gain uh, gain weight. Okay, they can gain double the amount of weight what they have lost. <laughs> the reason being is that their adipose tissues was still active. Okay, the causes are your poor dietary patterns, lack of physical activity. Okay, 43% of adolescents watch at least two hours. Nowadays, it is not much about the TV. It's more about use, your usage of smartphones. Okay, so yeah, not just TV, but yeah, just, just uh, sitting and playing video games or just scrolling through the web, uh, uh, sitting in your room and not moving around, not going outside, not witnessing the world outside, etc. That could lead to juvenile onset obesity. Adult onset for obesity develops in adulthood. The number of adipose cells will not change much. Whatever adipose cells you had during your growing age, the, in, the same adipose cells will be used for giving you obesity later. So, but these adipose cells are larger in size. They can store a lot more of fat. And if the weight gain continues, then only the adipose cells number will increase. Otherwise, no. Okay, so people who were never obese during their childhood or infant uh, infantile st uh, stage. And if they have just begun to be overweight, it's easier for them to find a lifestyle change and never be obese again, okay? But if you don't discontinue your lifestyle changes, if you uh, keep on uh, hard, uh, harness, uh, harboring uh, like the bad ha food habits, you, you not only will have larger adipose tissue, but you will have more number of adipose tissue, okay? So strategies of weight loss, uh, st uh, management and uh, the, the foundation and the management we will discuss later because uh, there is a formula which we have to discuss here, okay, that we will discuss later. Today, uh, most of the students who are writing exams have not part participated, so that we will keep for the next week, okay. So this is an important formula that I will be taking next week, the strategies of weight loss, that is all the management, five, five management, sorry, six management principles are there. You have just have to follow that for weight loss. And there is a formula, so with, with the help of which you can find an ideal calorie intake based on you, based on your individuality, you can find an ideal calorie, calorie intake based on your gender, height, weight, age, etc. okay? 